One man is dead in a crash after colliding with a semi. The former Olympic doctor who sexually assaulted athletes learns his fate. And it's up to a four-legged friend to help keep Glacier National Park safe. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Jill Valley. And I'm Dennis Bragg. One man is dead in a head-on crash between a pickup and a semi-truck on I-90 east of Missoula. MTN's Eric Clements was on the scene of this crash. He joined us now with the latest. Eric. Thanks, Jill. Dennis. It happened just after 3 p.m. this afternoon, mile marker 133 on I-90 near Beavertail Hill. Montana Highway Patrol says the driver of the pickup was headed west when he crossed the center line into the path of an oncoming semi when they collided. The crash killed the pickup driver and injured his passenger. The semi-truck driver went to the hospital but did not appear to be seriously hurt. We do not know the condition of the passenger. MHP trooper Thomas Gill says the cause of the crash remains unknown but urges drivers to remain cautious. Well, it is winter time. They should slow down, but at this point, nothing indicates that speed was a factor. All the roads are dry, pavement good. So at this point, we don't know why the vehicle went into the median. The cause of the crash is under investigation. Jill. All right, thank you, Eric. A new lobbying report shows controversial power company Whitefish Energy shelled out a six-figure payment for lobbying Congress after the firm came under fire for a contract to restore power in hurricane-ravaged Puerto Rico. Whitefish Energy raised eyebrows when the tiny company nailed a $300 million contract to restore power in the wake of Hurricane Maria last year. The contract with the Puerto Rico Electric Power Authority was eventually canceled after questions were raised about the company's ability to handle the work, but also because the contract was awarded without competitive bidding. Some critics also questioned the company's association with Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke, although the Whitefish Republican flatly denied having anything to do with the deal. Now the Center for Responsive Politics says a fourth quarter lobbying report shows Whitefish Energy paid $150,000 to have the law firm Foley Lardner defend them when Congress started looking into the contract. The Center's website, OpenSecrets.org, says neither Whitefish Energy or the law firm offered comment on the revelation. With new and renovated buildings coming online quickly now as part of the Smart Schools 2020 bond in Missoula, the days of schools struggling with failing boilers and crumbling buildings are becoming a thing of the past. But trustees are beginning to wonder what happens decades from now when all these new schools are old again. That discussion last night as trustees and staff looked at the expiration of three building reserve levies, which voters approved six years ago to catch up on deferred maintenance. With those projects wrapping up, there are still several hundred thousand dollars left in the accounts, a useful balance going forward. But now with 20 schools being built or rebuilt, that focus is going to change, much as it did when the post-war schools came online to teach baby boomers. Major repairs shouldn't be needed except in emergencies, but trustees say it would be nice to develop a long-range plan to keep future generations from finding themselves in a rough spot years from now. And that's exactly what's going on here with this relatively small fund to maintain all of these buildings. So making a plan that really addresses that in a way that people can feel confident about um, protecting all their investments is a good idea. So it's really hard to project um, what we could do through a building reserve or something to prevent us from being at this same place 40 years from now, because 40 years from now you will have 18 40-year-old boilers. <laughs> Administrators say it will also be tough to forecast how those future schools will operate, giving future tech and trends in technology a look. But it is expected the school board will try and have a public discussion to consider that problem. Most kids were excited last night to hear about an extended winter break for Missoula County Public Schools. For parents, on the other hand, it's raising some questions. As we told you last night, Missoula County Public Schools will be receiving a longer winter break next year. School trustees approved a calendar with a winter break starting on December 24th and classes resuming January 7th. But on our social media pages, many parents are expressing concerns. Some parents say they're worried about arranging child care over a two-week break. So we took those questions to Missoula County Public Schools Communications Director Hatton Lippman, who has some options for families. In Missoula, there are a variety of resources, uh, day camps and vacation camps that are offered by outside providers outside of the school district. So we always recommend families look for those opportunities. We definitely like to suggest that students be supervised either by an adult or an older sibling. Um, and we like to encourage families to use that time to spend as much time as they can together. 
The extended break is due to where the major holidays fall in the week next year and has nothing to do with the shortened winter break that we had this year where it was only a week. Other major holidays remain unchanged on both the elementary and high school calendar. The last day of school next year will be June 13th. We kicked off a wet weather trend today and more is expected through the remainder of the week, but some seasonally high temperatures may keep most of that precipitation in the form of rain instead of snow at those lower elevations. For more, let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Aaron Yost who has the first forecast. Aaron. Yeah, Dennis, we're going to see kind of a roller coaster of temperatures and precipitation types, therefore, over the next several days as wave after wave of moisture gets thrown our way. Take a look at downtown Hamilton today. First Security Bank ICAM gray skies. Much of the day has been kind of a wet one for the northwest quarter of the state after starting off with some snow. And we do have more snow in the forecast overnight tonight. A cold front will brush through the northern Rockies by tomorrow morning's commute, allowing for some light accumulation possibly for a lot of our valleys. Unfortunate time with that one looking at some scattered snow Friday and Saturday before Valley rain returning on Sunday. More details coming up in your forecast. If you've ever visited Glacier National Park, maybe you've experienced a close encounter with a mountain goat, maybe a bighorn or another animal. And while it's fun to see close encounters with wild animals, especially those mountain goats can be dangerous. But one trained border collie does her part to keep those animals at a safe distance and stays busy in the winter. MTN's Nicole Miller has more about the program. Dogs just kind of get people's attention. They're kind of, and especially when you're, you know, as photogenic as she is. All you have to do is take a look at Bark Ranger Gracie's Instagram to see her more than 14,000 Instagram followers would agree. Gracie joined the staff at Glacier National Park in 2016 and herds wildlife away from visitors. Okay, let's go. But her handler, natural resources manager Mark Beale, says she doesn't just get to sit around the fireplace in the winter. She works during the winter. Um, we work in the headquarters and park housing area. Um, in the past several years, there's been a lot of uh, bold mountain lions kind of coming into the housing area in the winter. And the reason they're here is because there's a lot of deer that hang out because, you know, there's plowed roads. It's easier for them to get around. He says Gracie herds the deer out of the housing area and hopes the mountain lions follow them. Beal says since launching the program, it's gotten bigger than he ever imagined, and it helps him get to interact with more visitors. One thing we've noticed is there's a lot of uh, visitors that come to the park now hoping to meet Gracie and that's great because then I get to talk to visitors and remind them to be safe around park wildlife and uh, answer questions. So it's really, you know, taken off. He says while the days of clapping, shouting and shaking rocks to keep the wildlife at a safe distance have turned a new corner, there's still more work to be done. Gracie's a great tool to have in the toolbox, you know, she's not the, the do-all, end-all, final answer, but she's another unique tool that we can use. Beal says he would like to see the program expanded in 2018. And ideally, it'd be kind of nice to have, you know, a couple more dog handler teams in the park so that we can cover more areas of the park um, throughout the course of the summer. Beal says him and Gracie usually make it up to Logan Pass about once or twice a week. Nicole Miller, MTN News, Glacier National Park. Some exciting news today. Legendary Northwest rock band Pearl Jam is coming back to Missoula. This concert will be at Washington Grizzly Stadium Monday, August 13th. I know a lot of folks already have that day off. Other stops on this Pearl Jam tour include Seattle, Chicago, and Boston. They're called home shows. The ones in Seattle will be at Safeco Field just before the Missoula show. But this concert in town follows very successful outdoor shows by the Rolling Stones and Paul McCartney in recent years. And this one for sure will be another awesome performance. And be careful that you're doing approved tickets. The pre-sale starts tomorrow, the regular sale at 10 o'clock on Friday. Um, so be careful that you're getting those right tickets. A lot of scalpers out there. That's so true. Coming up, Aaron says more snow is back in the forecast. He has more on this wet weather pattern coming up next. And we'll show you how the Coast Guard is working to control a stubborn ice jam on a river in Connecticut. Still ahead here on KPEX.